The Mongol invasions of Vietnam, also known as Mongol-Vietnamese Wars, were military campaigns launched by the Mongol Empire and its chief Khanate, the Yuan Dynasty against the Kingdom of Dai Viet, ruled by the Tran Dynasty, and the Kingdom of Champa. The wars, which were divided into three waves from 1257 to 1288, were considered one of the most heroic pages of the Vietnamese people, and also a glorious feat of arms of the Tran Dynasty. In the 13th century, Vietnam was divided into two states, Dai Viet in the north and Champa in the south. In 1225, the Lai Dynasty, which ruled the kingdom of Dai Viet for over 200 years, was replaced by the Tran Dynasty, when the eight-year-old Queen Lai Chu Huang was forced to abdicate the throne in favor of her husband, Tran Khan, later known as King Tran Tai Tong. Meanwhile, in the north, China has long been divided. The Song Dynasty had to retreat south due to the invasion of Great Jin, while the west was divided by the Western Xia Empire. By the early 13th century, the Mongols in the northern part of the reunified Jin Empire gained strength under Genghis Khan and started invading the south. Western Xia was destroyed in 1227 by the Mongols, followed by the fall of the Jin Dynasty in 1234. By the 1250s, the Mongol Empire had spread over large parts of Eurasia, including Eastern Europe, North China, Mongolia, Manchuria, Central Asia, Tibet, and Southwest Asia, and was eyeing the Song Dynasty in Southern China. In an effort to open a southern front against the Song Dynasty, Manke Kong, the fourth Kagan of the Mongol Empire, sent the Prince Kublai to conquer the Dali Kingdom, present-day Yunnan province. In the southwest, Uri Yankadai, son of Subutai, Genghis Khan's greatest strategist, led successful campaigns and pacified tribes in Tibet before turning east towards Dai Viet by 1257. In the autumn of 1257, Uri Yankadai sent three letters to Vietnamese ruler Tran Tai Tong demanding passage through Dai Viet to attack the Song from the south, but all were rejected by the Tran king. Instead, Tran Tai Tong imprisoned the Mongol diplomats and prepared soldiers to deter the Mongol troops. This action led Uri Yankadai to invade Dai Viet and also marked the beginning of the Mongol invasions in Vietnam. In early 1258, Uri Yankadai and his son Aju, along with 40,000 Mongols and 10,000 Yi troops from the Dali Kingdom, advanced towards Dai Viet in two wings, one along the Che River and one along the Tao River, which gathered later in Bak Hak, Viet Tri, Phu To today. On January 17th, Tran Tai Tong led the army and 200 elephants and met Uri Yankadai's army on the field of Bin Le and Guyin, Bin Zhuyin, Bin Phuc. In this battle, Aju's sharpshooters targeted the elephants, causing them to turn around and trample the Viet soldiers. As the Mongols proved to dominate, the Dai Viet army retreated to Sok Son, Hanau to preserve the forces, but failed again in the later battle, forcing them to retreat to Tang Long. Once arriving at Tang Long, the army carried out this scorched earth policy. They burned all the farms and moved all the food away before evacuating to Tian Mok, Hanam. Therefore, when the Mongols proceeded to occupy the city, Tang Long, present day Hanoi, they were starved due to the lack of food supply. After strengthening the forces, on January 29th from Tian Mok, Dai Viet's king, Tran Tai Tong, along with Prince Tran Hoang, counterattacked and defeated the Mongols at Ba Din, Hanoi, forcing them to retreat from Tang Long to Yan'an, along the Red River. When going through Yen Bai, remnants of the Mongols were raided and defeated by an ethnic minority led by Habong, a Thai general marking the end of the first attack against Dai Viet. In March 1258, Tran Tai Tong abdicated the throne to his son, Tran Tan Tong. In 1278, Tran Tai Tong died, 
the King Tran Tan Tong retired and made Crown Prince Tran Kam, known as Tran Nan Tong, as the successor. In 1279, the Mongols annexed the Song Dynasty. Kublai Khan ascended the throne and established the Yuan. Kublai repeatedly sent envoys to Dai Viet to urge the new king to come to China in person. However, these Yuan diplomatic missions ended in failures as the king resisted to go. At the end of 1282, the Yuan army led by General Sogatu conducted an expedition by sea to Champa, advancing from the former Song territory and landing near the Cham capital of Viaja, now the south central coast region of Vietnam, in February 1283. Although Viaja soon fell to Sogatu, the Cham resistance decimated the Yuan army, forcing Sogatu to withdraw his troops to the northern part of Champa near the Vietnamese frontier, and waiting for aid from the Yuan court. In 1284, Togen was appointed to lead a force overland to Champa and ordered Dai Viet to help supply the army. But Grand Prince Tran Hung Dao rallied 15,000 troops and refused Togen's demand. This action became a pretext for the Yuan conquest of Dai Viet. At the end of January 1285, more than 50,000 Yuan troops from Yunnan crossed the border to attack Dai Viet. Holding a numerical advantage, the Yuan army gained continuous victories over the Viet force in the battles of Lang San, Song Dong, Hai Duong, Yan Bin, and Duong River. In the north, on February 18th, Dai Viet troops withdrew from Tang Long to Tian Truong, Nam Din, and Truong Yen, Nin Bin, suffering the continuous attacks of the Yuan troops. From the south, Sogatu marched north to link up with Togen and undertook a great pincer movement on Dai Viet. Tran Hung Dao had to divide his force to try to block the advance of Sogatu, but failed and forced the royal family to retreat to the coastal Quang Nin province. Although successfully capturing Tang Long, the Yuan army once again suffered difficulty in food supply due to the scorched earth policy of the Tran army. Taking advantage of the Yuan troops being weakened due to shortage of food, summer heat, and disease, about two months after the retreat, Tran Hung Dao and his army decided to counterattack. Along the Red River, Dai Viet Army gained several victories at Ham Tu Pass in Hung Yen, Chuang Duong in Hanoi, and finally liberated Tang Long capital. The Yuan Northern Army on the retreat route was attacked at Khao River, Van Kiep, while the army retreating to Yunnan was attacked at Phu Ninh, and the Southern Army was completely destroyed in Khao Chau. Sogatu was defeated and killed in Chuang Duong, while Togan had to escape to the Yuan territory by hiding in a bronze cask. Despite being defeated twice, Kublai and the Yuan army had yet given up their intention of invasion of Dai Viet. In October 1287, the Yuan land forces commanded by Togan moved southwards from Guangxi and Yunnan in three divisions, led by General Abachi and Chang Yu, while the naval expedition through Bak Dang River, Quang Nin, led by Generals Omar, Zhang Wenhu, and Ao Luchi. In January 1288, Zhang Wenhu's supply fleet, following Omar's fleet to pass through Ha Long Bay to join Togon's forces in Van Kiep, was attacked and destroyed by the Vietnamese Navy under Prince Tran Cong Du. With no sign of Wenhu's supply fleet, Togon ordered the Mongol land force once again to occupy Dai Viet's capital, Tang Long. However, due to lack of food supplies, on the 5th of March 1288, Togon and Omar's army retreated back to Van Kiep. And 25 days later, Togon decided to return to China on a safety large warship. Aware of the Yuan defeat, Tran Hung Dao ordered his army to destroy bridges, roads, and create traps along the retreating Yuan route. Under the frenzied attack of the Dai Viet army, Togon was forced to abandon his ship in Lang Song and was escorted back to China by his few remaining troops through the forests. Meanwhile, in the early morning of the 9th of April, the Yuan naval fleet, led by Omar, fled home along the Bakadang River. Borrowing in Go Kuyin's old stratagem in 938, Tran Hung Dao had metal-tipped stakes placed at the mouth of the Bakdang River at night, 
And the next day, during high tide, a small fleet of Vietnamese junks attacked and lured the Yuan fleet into the river, just as the tide was starting to ebb. Hitting the stakes, the Yuan boats were trapped and then sunk, captured or burned by Vietnamese fire arrows. Thousands of Yuan troops jumped into the river and were killed or drowned, while Omar himself was taken as a prisoner by the Vietnamese. In Yuan, angry over the Yuan defeats in Dai Viet, Kublai banished Togen to Yangzhou for life. In 1289, Dai Viet released most of the Mongol prisoners of war to China, but Omar was intentionally drowned when the boat transporting him was contrived to sink. Dai Viet, despite successfully preserving and defending its sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity, decided to accept the nominal supremacy of the Yuan dynasty and served as tributary states in order to avoid further conflicts. Thanks for watching. If you find this information useful, please give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos of history.